let's look at fountain pens. Since my teenage years, I've absolutely loved the design elements and the aesthetic appeal of working with and writing with a fountain pen, but not just because they are pieces of beautiful design, but also, and just as much perhaps, for the joy I get when writing with a fountain pen. To watch the flow of the ink over the paper as you write, this has to be one of life's greatest creative pleasures, as we shall see as I go through these first four pens. Each one comes with clear memories for me and connections to people and places along the way. The fountain pen industry was in decline in the early 1970s, and so the Parker Pen Company wanted a radical new design. They wanted to reach the 18 to 30 age group because these people hadn't been targeted before as potential fountain pen users. There was a potential market here of as many as 10 million users to whom Parker could offer something really fresh. They commissioned the British designer, Kenneth Grange, and this became his baby. Launched in 1975, the Parker 25 were all the rage at school. Mine came in a plastic shell case with a clear hinged cover, and it was the fountain pen plus the ballpoint in this beautiful brushed silver metal that we hadn't seen before. It had a blue Parker pen logo to the pocket clip, and the trim between the cap and the barrel was the same matching blue plastic, which when you lifted the cap, revealed the blue barrel. I had this pen for my 12th birthday, and I know that my mum and dad bought it for me from the stationery store WH Smith's in the centre of Nottingham. And I was proud as punch to have these two pens in my blazer pocket for school use, and of course, for my homework after school. We all had them in our school bags, and we were really proud of this new design so different from the fountain pens of our parents and our aunts and uncles. The next pen is my Schaefer Targa. This one I bought in 1981. It was named for an Italian open road endurance car race near Palermo in Sicily. And the Schaefer Targa was the very first elegant pen to come into my life. It wasn't so much love at first sight, but it was a pen that I first saw in the specialised pen centre to Nottingham when I was growing up as a teenager. A few years later, it was the first fountain pen that I paid for myself. I had a year living at home after secondary school and before going off to university. And during that year, I worked in the dark hours of the early morning as a milkman, collecting milk direct from the farm and delivering it to doorsteps in our village. And then at eight o'clock in the morning, I would change clothes and walk just across the street to the village post office where I could collect my official post office red bicycle. I would cycle with another postman to meet the train and collect a couple of mail bags each. We'd place these on the handlebar baskets of our bikes and return back to the post office to sort the mail with other posters. And then I would spend the rest of the morning hours on my particular route delivering mail to the houses. Using my wages, I went back to that beautiful small shop, Pen Sense, in central Nottingham, and that's where I bought my Targa. I'd wanted one for several years and thought to myself, yes, I need one of these in my life. I also loved the story of the Schaefer Pen Company, having grown out of a venture by one Walter Schaefer in the American West. He'd failed to make his fortune in the gold rush, and so he returned to Iowa from the West Coast where he set up a jewellery store. Unable as a small independent company to compete with the pricing discounts afforded the larger stores, he focused instead on a new venture with colours and inks and some printing activity and eventually created the Schaefer Pen Company. This particular Schaefer Targa was the first fountain pen I ever used to write creatively with and was also the first fountain pen I used for a proper pen and ink edit of a manuscript I had typed myself of my first ever travel story. And so it's got a very special place in my heart. Not bad for a pen that I've had more than 40 years. My very next pen was the Parker 45 Fly to Deluxe and I bought mine in 1982, the year after buying my Schaefer Targa. This pen, the Parker 45, was based on a design from the Eversharp Pencil and Pen Company 
because Parker had bought them out in 1957. The Parker 45 took a while to evolve as a design and then to go into production, but its name, the Parker 45, was a reference to the revolvers, think Colt 45, of the American West, not just to the calibre of the gun, but also the fact that this fountain pen could be loaded, in inverted commas, with either an ink converter or the standard cartridges. When I bought this pen, I felt like a real grown-up. It wasn't necessarily just the fact that I was buying the pen, but it was the first time I bought a pen outside of Nottingham, my home city. I bought this pen in a little bookshop and stationery store, popular with students in Portsmouth, a coastal town in the south of England where I was going for four years for my degree. The shop was called Floods, it's long since closed down, and it was on the eastern side of Palmerston Road in Southsea, just a five minute walk from the beachfront and 10 minutes from our student classrooms and from the library. I bought the pen at the start of my first term, along with many of the books on the recommended reading list for our academic year. 1982 was the first year of me living away from home, and I think also that having a new fountain pen symbolised my commitment to study and learning so many new aspects of the history and cultures of Latin America that featured so strongly in my degree. The Parker 45, the Flighter Deluxe no less, was different from my other Parker, the 25, and also from my Schaefer Targa. This Parker 45 was designed by Don Doman, and it was different because it tapered at both ends, giving a superb fit in the hand. It also has that classic Parker arrow serving as the pocket clip, as well as the gold cap and the golden barrel cap, to give it that extra touch of beauty and also of luxury it was the first pen I had which had any sense of gilt or golden metalwork. This was the first fountain pen I took with me to Mexico a year later and it was the main pen I would sit down and use to write letters home to England. The final pen for today is a black and gilt fountain pen by a company called Creeks and Creeks. In November of 1996 I had flown to Turin in northern Italy This is an industrial town long famous for being home to the Fiat car company. I'd gone there for a few days to speak at an academic or literary conference dedicated to the books and the story ideas of Carlos Castaneda and the lessons to be had from his many writings. The background to this is that I had spent a week with Castaneda back in 1981 when I was travelling from the East Coast to the West Coast of the United States And so I was at the conference to share my experience of the man and the way he thought. Driven back to Turin Airport by my hosts on the final day, I had a couple of hours before my flight back to the UK. And in the gift shop, I saw these slightly tacky but ever so appealing pens on display. There was no packaging, just a handful of the same larger pen standing upright in a short cardboard display box by the till. With the benefit of hindsight, I wish now that I'd actually bought two or three, because the pen I bought has proved to be an absolute winner. The pens I saw on display appealed immediately for their modern utility, but also for their old style design elements. I was attracted by the black and gold colourways, the faux gilt to the barrel trim, the gilt of the pocket clip, and of course the stunning gilt and silver nib, with such beautiful scroll work spelling out the brand name. Creeks and Creeks were created by a company called Stipen in France as a sub-brand during the 1980s. Stipen were a French pen maker established in Paris as far back as 1934, and they had a strong position in the 1980s as providers of pens to French schoolchildren. The Creeks and Creeks sub-brand was active from the late 1980s to the mid-1990s, so the model I bought was possibly no longer being manufactured when I purchased it in 1996. Looking back on it, that might explain the lack of packaging or branding at the airport shop. I don't think I even paid £3 for the pen, but it is still out and out one of my favourites. The barrel and the cap are made of a strong resin and have not marked at all in more than 25 years that I have had the pen. By comparison, the gilt to the metal pocket clip and to the barrel trim Both of these have somewhat faded so that the 
silver of the metal shows through these days. The nib, though, continues to be as good as new, and this is such a great pen, and it's certainly the most regularly used of these four shared with you here. That's my personal journey through the 21 years from 1975 to 1996, and basically the four pens that I was either given or which I purchased over those two decades. These are only some of my fountain pens, but when I considered the different ways of looking at and talking about the pens that mean so much to me and about the connections that I have with each one of them, I settled on the sense that a chronological approach to sharing them was probably the most practical. They are reflections of my character. They are a part of my personal history. It's not just the design of each pen and the way that each one is shaped or its weight as it sits in our hand before we uncap it and start to write with the instrument. But it's also the relationship we have with our memories of each pen. Tell me, what are the pens that you love writing with? What stories have you got associated with a fountain pen that is important to you for any number of reasons? 